guess we're not. <laughs> we must be dead. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. And we want to welcome those who may be watching online. This is our Redeemer Lutheran Church in sunny and hot Southern California. Next Sunday, it'll be uh, 40 degrees and raining, so uh, that's the way it is. Anyway, welcome to all of you. Uh, today is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. We have a baptism today. This little guy, Roy William Holmes, is going to be baptized. So let's begin with the uh, pre-service song. By the way, we also lost our pianist this morning. He, uh, well, I shouldn't say it. That sounded really uh, bad, didn't it? Um, he's sick. So Andy is stepping in in the last 10, 15 minutes. So thank you, Andrew. Let's sing Mad Majesty. We'll sing it through twice, right, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, join us, please. Again, we welcome you to God's house as we continue our journey through the season of Epiphany. And today's theme is on the authority of Jesus. So I want you to think about authority and how challenged authority is today, okay, on many levels. So we're going to be, continue with the opening song, Stand and See. And we repeat the first part, correct? And then we uh, do the second on the second page and then repeat the whole thing. And we're not going to sit and see, we're going to stand and see. So would you please rise? For you by the power of 
and let's have a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us together this day. We thank you for the baptism of this little boy. Thank you for bringing his family together and bless them. And may they, this be a day for them to remember for a long time. Grant us your peace. Be with us this day, dear Lord Jesus. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, still and even in our world today. Amen. Uh, can we continue with the greeting of the peace. So get out and greet those around you this morning. Good morning, Emily. And Hillary, bring a hymn book. Here, I'll get you one. Here, Hillary. Just relax. It takes it takes a while. But it Marlene is seated. We'll continue on. Take out your hymn books, would you please, and turn in the front to page 199, and there you will find the order of holy baptism, the blue hymn book in front of you, page 199. Are we good? All right, family, uh, hymn books, okay, page 199 in the front, in the way front, Mama, Grandma, way front, way front. We begin our time together this day in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. John, you want to come up and join us? Our Lord commanded, i just slide over just a little bit. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to his disciples in the last chapter of St. Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, going, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the end of the age. The apostles have written, the promises for you and your children, and baptism now saves us. We also learn from God's word that we are all conceived and born sinful, so we are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever, unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all, all mercy and grace sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Roy, receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. And hear how our Lord Jesus opened the kingdom of heaven to little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was angry. He said, you let those little children come to me. Don't stop them. 
For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. This is the gospel of our Lord. We skip down to number six. Dear sponsors, it is your task as sponsors to confess with the whole church the faith in our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in whose name this little boy is baptized. After he has been baptized at all times, remember him in your prayers, put him in mind of his baptism as much as in you lies, and give your counsel and aid, especially if he should ever lose his parents, that he be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God. He taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and as he grows in years, you place into his hands the Holy Bible, bring him to the services of God's house, and provide for his further instruction in the Christian faith, that he come to the sacrament of our Lord's body and blood, and thus, abiding in his baptismal grace and in communion with the church, he may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus. This then do you intend gladly and willingly to do? God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace, fulfill what we are often unable to do. So in order to implore the blessing of our Lord upon the gathering of this child into God's family, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Would you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. The Lord bless your coming in, your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Because this child cannot answer for himself, we shall, together with sponsors and parents, faithfully speak on his behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sins and the birth of the life of faith which God our Father gives in and through baptism. So let me ask you the questions. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes. Yes. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, yes I believe. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the forgiveness of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lost. And who brings this child to be baptized? And how is he named? Roy William Holmes. Okay, bring him over. Roy William Holmes, I baptize you in the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Spirit, and may the God who adopts you today, Roy, keep you in the saving faith until life everlasting. I'll be right back. We'll continue with the uh, baptismal liturgy. Uh, hope, where are we? Receive this burning light and live always by the light of Christ. Be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him to the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. And let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family 
and have granted Roy William Holmes the new birth and holy baptism, made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We beseech you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to all your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go ahead. John, please, through baptism, number 19. Through baptism, God has added Roy William Holmes to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. We, we welcome you into the Lord's family. family. We receive, receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child, child of the same, same Heavenly Father, Father to work, work with, with us in his kingdom. kingdom. And you, Roy, may the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. You can roll that out. Okay. There you go. You can return to your seats. And we're going to sing a baptismal hymn uh, printed in your worship folders. Father welcomes, right? <coughs> Thank you. out your Bibles, please, and turn way in the back to page 1,910. The uh, first lesson is from the epistle of Jude, okay? Thank you, Andy, for showing up today and stepping in and spotting the piano player. Jude chapter 1, well, there is only one chapter. Verses 17, but I want you to go back to back a page and look at the introduction to the epistle of Jude. See that there? Okay. Let me read this. And I want you to notice, one of the things you need to notice is how 
timely this is for today and our world today. All right? Let me read this. Jude, like James, was a brother of Jesus. He wrote to warn Christians about the same false teachers Peter wrote about in his second letter. Here it is. These false teachers were not only teaching that Jesus was not the Son of God, very common today, they were also leading the people to live sinful lives, very common today. Jude warns that God will punish and destroy these false teachers as he did the sinners in the Old Testament. All right, now turn the page, and I'm going to start reading at verse 17, and I'm going to have, I'm going to have you join me a, a little way on. This is the call to persevere, and apply this to our time, all right? Maybe many of us aren't aware of this. Let me read. Dear friends, Remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. They said to you, in the last times, there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who divide you, who follow, here it is, mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. But you, dear friends, Build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you eternal life. Join me, please. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others, show mercy mixed with fear hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from failing and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forever. Amen. Did you notice the key word there at the end? What's the key word? All authority. Majesty, power, and authority. Come back to that. All right, now turn to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, you'll find on page 1552. One five five two. So we lost one already, but that's okay. It happens. <laughs> All right. Remember the days you had children in the pew next to you, and three and four, and I remember that. And my wife was always out <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> the best part was when they started climbing under the pews. Remember that? Got to get them three, three doors down. All right, so the season of Epiphany focuses on Jesus as true God. All right? Let me say that. That's very important. It is, and, and today, it's of great importance in the time in which we're living, okay? Because our verses deal with the authority of Jesus. Aren't we living in an anti-authority age? Huh? I think we are. How about school authority? Have you lost a little bit over there in school authority? How about in the home? How about the civil authority obeying the law? Ah, get away with it, right? Okay, so we, in, the, in, the fir in this section we have a word you'll never know. It's called oithos. Anybody here know their Greek? This is to let you know I know a little bit about it. Oithus, E-U-T-H-U-S. -E it means immediately. So three times, or right away. So three times in our short verses, Mark says, immediately Jesus did this. That's St. Mark. Everything is action. He's all action-packed. Jesus is out there. He's not sitting in his living room watching TV doing nothing. He is out and about preaching, teaching, teaching 
and healing. And that's our verses for today. All right, let me begin reading and I'll have you join me. So they, who's they? Andrew and Peter, James and John, and Jesus. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently, and he came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed. They asked each other, what is this? a new teaching, and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. And Paul, or Mark, puts in there, immediately, the news spread around him. All right, keep your Bibles open. Let's go through this. So where does Jesus begin his ministry? In church, in the synagogue, right? Boy, have you ever had this happen in your church? I don't think it's ever happened here, okay? Anyway, I got a few comments on that. So he begins in a synagogue, and he's invited to speak. By the way, that was not uncommon in Jesus' day. If there was a visiting person there who may have thought of been a teacher, they would have that guy get up, and he would speak for a while, okay? Not uncommon, all right? But Jesus' teaching is huge because he taught as one having, because he knew what he was talking about. He knew what he was talking about. He wasn't like who? The teachers of the law, the scribes. You know those guys. They hated him. Finally, they got him killed. Why were the, what, would, what was the scribes' message? The scribes' message was this. It was about the law making judgments, and man-made rules and regulations. How'd you like to go to church and hear every day, every week, some new man-made rule and regulation? Wouldn't be too fun, would it? But Jesus has authority. And he's, as the guest preacher, he's fabulous. We've never had a guy like this. Who is this guy? His message is fabulous, and people were listening. And then what happened? All of a sudden, some guy gets up and stands up and starts yelling and screaming at Jesus. A guy possessed with demon, with demonic spirits. And he says, what have you come, Jesus of Nazareth, to destroy us, you, you son? Of, what is it? The Holy One of God. Isn't that what he calls him? I know who you are. You're the Holy One. And what does Jesus do? He says, you come out of him, you evil spirit. Again, shows Jesus what? Authority. Authority over the powers of darkness. And the man shakes. And, he, and the spirit comes out with a great sh shriek. And then what happens? Probably the guy collapses to the floor, right? And the people are saying, Man, we've never seen this in church before. <laughs> this is amazing. This is a Sunday we'll never forget, okay? I got, a, I got another phrase for you, all right? So the man shakes, collapses, and then he began to look normal. What an impression Jesus made. Everybody there was what? Here it is. Scraping their jaws off the floor. They had never seen anything like this. The Son of God was with them, and they encountered Jesus, and his name and his fame would spread quickly. It's all that they could, what? Talk about. They had never seen anything 
All right? Let's move on to part two. So what's the main point of today? The main point of today is the authority of Jesus as the Son of God and the Savior of the world, okay? Over the powers of sin and Satan and over the powers of evil. The authority of Jesus fills the pages of the New Testament. He has authority. Now, before we go there, let's talk about authority. Government. Does the government have authority anymore? Oh, boy, it seems everybody's against it. But yeah, the government has authority, right? To protect the authority of the law, correct? Although sometimes you wonder whether we're observing the law and whether we care about the law. How about the authority at home with parents? Huh? Remember when you had authority as a parent? Huh? Yeah, your word said. And by the way, if they went against your authority, what happened? They were either grounded or they had got a spanking. Oh, today you couldn't do that. You know, we don't want to scare the kid. Maybe that's part of our problem. Okay, I, we won't get into that. I'm sorry. How about, how about authority in the school? Where it's the teachers had authority. They had power, right? Over, over, over the conduct of children. I think we're losing that, John, aren't we? Yeah, a little bit. Not the way it used to be. When I was a kid, you got in, you got in trouble. You know where you went. You went there a lot of times. Where was it? The principal's office, there you go. And you sat there, and then the principal did what? Called your mother and your father. Not only were you in trouble there, but now you got in trouble at home because you were living under authority, and you were responsible to authority. The court system, the law, and all of this today amazingly is being questioned and set aside. Let me say this. The sovereignty of God is unrestricted. God has the final and complete authority to judge the living and the dead, okay? Times and dates are set by the Father's authority and the events in the affairs of this world, okay? And Jesus has authority to forgive sins. In the Great Commission, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. We read it this morning, good timing. Going, therefore, make what? Disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching them. That's Jesus' authority. Jesus' authority is in preaching, teaching, and healing because he was engaged in spiritual warfare against the powers of darkness. Now, many deny this to these days, divine authority. I went online, and I know that's a dangerous thing to do, but once in a while I do, and I found something I have to share with you today. The rejection of the supernatural. Skepticism. There is no God. We don't believe in anything beyond what we can see and touch and, and, and understand. Skepticism ha is replacing faith in America. We're skeptical about anything. And faith, oh yeah, you know, I don't believe that stuff anymore. For many, Jesus is teachings are suggestions for a better life. Do this. Try this. Your life will be better for you. For many, that's what it is. Many accept the half Jesus, the Jesus who's a good guy, the sanitized Jesus. You like that term? The one we've cleaned up a little bit. He's not the eternal son of God. He's just a human being. He died a martyr's death. He didn't die to pay for the sins of the world. He's just a good old boy, a nice guy whose example to, that we can follow. That's the sanitized Jesus. And here's the phrase I found this week called the half Jesus. 
Or do you like this one? How about Jesus Jr.? Jesus Jr. He's not way up here. We bring him down. He's a one of us, okay? Jesus Jr., the sanitized version. He doesn't amaze us. He doesn't astonish us, all right? He doesn't surprise us. He is safe, he's comfortable, and he's manageable. For many people, folks, that is the way of Jesus. Christianity, people leaving the kingdom of God, and churches that are now changing Jesus, who is a mere man, not the savior of the world, who died on the cross to save you, okay? We need the real Jesus. Here's the real Jesus. The real Jesus did something about salvation. The real Jesus did something about your sin and my sin, all right? He took it into his own hands. He carried your sin and my sin where? To the cross. And it was nailed to the cross. He died for you and me to give us the gift of eternal life. He died for this little boy. But we're living in an age that says, oh, there's no sin. You don't sin. That You, don't, you just make mistakes. The real Jesus dealt with sin and death. The real Jesus died on the cross. The real Jesus rose from the dead. The real Jesus will come back to judge the living and the dead because he has, what's the word? Authority. Authority. And I want to warn you folks. Well, I'm coming to the last part of my sermon. I'll get it. All right? That is the authority of Jesus, who is our Savior and our Lord. Now, last part. We who live under the authority of Jesus, we have to listen and learn from him. Let me say that. That was in the book of Jude, okay? Be careful. You don't get sucked in or sucked away to the the sanitized Jesus. And that's going on a lot, folks. You may not know that, but it is. You need to listen and learn to the words of Jesus and the New Testament and not the ways of sinful men like Jude wrote about. And by the way, people, they are out there in swarms. They're in, not only out there outside the church, pulling God's people away. They're also inside Christian churches. And if you don't know about that, I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And they're all around us here in the San Fernando Valley. They sound good. It sounds great. No sin, no grace, no authority of Jesus. You need to be careful what you hear. And guard yourself against the powers of Satan that are infiltrating the kingdom inside the kingdom of God today. In our service today, when we come to the prayers, and I'm starting to do this, I think I'm going to do it every Sunday morning, I'm praying for the Christian church in America. Because not only are we on attack on the outside, and I expect that, but now within the church, the devil has come in and infiltrated. Think about this. You've heard me say this before. If you buy the new teaching that you don't sin, you just make mistakes, have you heard that? That's very popular. Then you don't need what? You don't need a savior, and you don't need Jesus. So guard yourself. Okay, the last word for today. Jesus is present with us today. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of you. And remember, our Lord Jesus gathers with us on Sunday mornings because we gather in his name and we live under 
his authority as our Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to continue with the offering, and then we're going to sing the song for the day, The Battle Belongs to the Lord. out your uh, insert in your worship folder, if you would, please. We're going to continue with the prayers and Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to close with the uh, Paschal Blessing and the Te Deum. But if you look, uh, turn to the inside where it says Faith and Fellowship, okay? Uh, I want to share with you on the prayer update side, uh, Irene Russell, who is Phil Montoya's mother. She lived in England. She passed away uh, earlier this week. She was 93 years old. So we want to remember the Montoya family in our prayers. Also, Daniel, their son Daniel, you guys know Daniel? Grew up in this church. Uh, he is, uh, has coming up surgery of some kind in the weeks ahead. Um, Steve Walla, I heard that he went to the hospital this day. Is that right? Who told me that? Yes? <coughs> Correct? Correct? So we want to pr pray for him. And, uh, and also, Liam Rollins. Many of you guys don't know him. Uh, he comes to the 830 service. He uh, is imp has impending uh, surgery, stomach surgery. Okay? So let's pray. And uh, we're also going to pray for the Christian church in the United States. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, and I'm going to give you a chance to pray as well. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this Sunday morning, dear Father, and we thank you that your church continues to gather here and around the world. 
And Jesus is present among his children, his believers, where two or three are gathered together in his name because he has authority as true God and Savior of the world. And so, dear Father, we take time to pray. First of all, dear Lord, we pray for the Montoya family as they grieve the death of Irene this last week. Dear Lord, be with Phil and her family through this time and grant them a sense of your peace and your presence. Be with Daniel also as he prepares for surgery in the weeks ahead. Be with Liam, dear Lord, as he also prepares for surgery and be with Steve Walla this day as he is at the hospital and watch over him and we pray all things go well for him. Lord, in your mercy, we also pray this day for those who need our prayers, those people in our lives who are dealing with health issues or personal issues or family issues or employment issues or even age issues. Dear Lord, hear us as we personally and privately spend time in prayer. Lord, in your mercy. And finally, dear Father, we take time to pray for the Christian church in America, a church in which many who were raised in the faith have now abandoned that faith, a church in which many churches have adopted a weak view of Jesus, the sanitized Jesus, Jesus Jr. Dear Lord, I pray for those those groups of people, that they may come to read their scriptures and see Jesus as you truly are, as the Savior of the world, the Son of God, who has authoritative teaching, preaching, and healing. Dear Lord Jesus, be with the church in America, that, it may, that we may have a revival, a rebirth, a re-energized event in the church in America. Dear Lord Jesus, may your presence and power be reju revitalized in the churches of this country. Lord, in your mercy. And together, dear Lord, we now pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you take out your hymn books, please? We don't get to use this very often. And turn to page 244. And we're going to begin with the Paschal Blessing. I will read those sections marked by the letter L. Okay, and when we come to the Tadeum, we'll all read section C. Ladies, would you read Roman numeral 1 section, and men, read Roman numeral 2. Okay, page 244. All of you who are baptized into Christ have been clothed with Christ. On the first day of the week, early in the morning, the women took spices they prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said, "'Why do you look for the living among the dead?' Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Together, 
You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. Ladies? Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The noble fellowship of the prophets praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. When you became man to set us free, you did not spurn the virgin's womb. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood and bring us with your saints to glory. O God, for our redemption, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross. By his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may rise to live with Christ forever, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord Almighty bless us, Direct our days and our deeds in his peace. We're going to continue with the closing song. Um, two announcements. Uh, LWML is beginning what they call Undie Sundays. And uh, if you, there's a box in the back if you want to bring socks, underwear, what else? Basically, that's it, huh? And uh, over the next couple of weeks and put them in the box, they will be sent. I'm not sure exactly where they go, but they go to needy children around the world, okay? Also, Lent begins uh, on the 14th of February, and we're going to have suppers at 5.30 on Wednesday and worship at 6.30. Uh, Ash Wednesday will be in here with the ashes and Holy Communion. But we need two more cooks, I think two more. Each Wednesday, we're asking for four people, four cooks, and each cook prepares a dish to share with eight to ten people. So if you're able, sign up, and we'll be thankful. You ready, Larry? Thank you, family. Good to have you with us. I got some stuff to give you, and you're going to take some pictures after. All right. Jesus bless you, by the way. I baptized this kid. Fifth. How many, not 50 years ago, 30, 30 years ago, yeah, 32 years ago. And, I may, and I'm not as old as I thought I was. All right, shall we sing?
long time since we sang that one. Wasn't that a VBS song? Yeah. I think so. All right, Jesus bless you, and uh, have a good week.